Now, on those polls, the government won't be too pleased that only 28% of us strongly support The Voice. There's other news polls on uh, political popularity, but that's one that struck me this morning. Almost as many of us, 23%, strongly oppose The Voice. Even though soft supporters give The Voice a poll majority, 56 to 37, the debate has hardly started. And the more people hear about The Voice, the less they're likely to support it. Today, for instance, Senator Pat Dodson, one of the 11 Indigenous voices already in the parliament, called for the voice to be represented in the National Cabinet. And he attacked voice opponents on the left for wanting a treaty first. Now, that's right, in the National Cabinet, where until now it's just been the PM and Premiers. So they're by virtue of being elected, not on account of their race. Dodson said too that the voice would be integral to negotiating treaties and to driving so-called truth-telling, which is hardly going to reassure soft supporters that the voice is no big deal, as the PM kept saying. The previous poll, this time in the Channel 9 newspapers, found that only 13%, so fewer than one in seven, thought they could even explain what the voice was. So despite the many millions that will be thrown at the Yes campaign by woke public companies and the tens and tens of millions that the government will spend in a one-sided one -sided and biased campaign against so-called misinformation, it's hard not to see today's poll as the high watermark for voice support. As Paul Keating once said of the GST, if you don't understand it, don't vote for it. And if you do understand it, you won't vote for it anyway. Australians aren't mugs even if the Prime Minister on this issue is treating them that way.